करते हैं हेलो गाइस स्विट दी आईटी गाय हेयर एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी टेकिंग अ लुक एट द क्राफ्ट वेल एपीआई प्रोवाइडेड बाय शॉपिफाई एंड वी विल बी इंप्लीमेंटिंग द सिंक कस्टमर्स फीचर थ्रू द क्राफ्ट वेल एपीआई नॉट विद द रेस्ट एपीआई एज वी सॉ फॉर द प्रोडक्ट्स एपीआई सो हियर आई हैव सम हार्ड कोडेड वैल्यूज एंड आई हैव ओपेंड अप द कस्टमर्स क्राफ्ट वेल एपीआई रेफरेंस so i'll be building an example on how to fetch the list of customers and sync it in your database so this is an example video and uh, let's begin so so far what i have done is um in the helper.php file i have created a new function which is the graphql headers for store so this will return the content type application json the x shopify access token as uh, previously we saw in the rest api and then another header which is the graphql cost include fields set to true which means that every query that we make to the graphql api it will return back the cost of it and how much uh, it cost to run that query and how much is left for us to use so the rate limiting is kind of uh, different from the rest api in the rest api you get to make uh, two api calls every second but in graphql api it is measured by the cost of the query that we run another thing to note is the all graphql um, urls are post request and uh, just their url is needed so let me show you this job file that i have been writing so in this uh, file that i have in jobs/shopify/sync folder i'll be taking the user in store uh, construct and uh, i'll be setting it here and then i'm uh, showcasing how i've written it so first thing is the graphql headers and uh, on the output you can see there are three headers as i explained before now let's see the end point so the end point is always going to be graphql.json uh, regardless of whether what purpose we are using the api for so if i do this then it says uh, laravel project to myshopify.com admin api graphql.json and each and every api request to this endpoint will be of post so here i have mentioned post and uh, this is the query variable that i'll be taking to make the actual api call which will be seen uh, in this function right here so let me put the try catch block around it so if it fails yeah so this is the example of how we can uh, make the request i think in php there is a library but we won't be using it we'll be using the curl way which is the query and inside that there is a customers and then you can specify the first 10 and inside the edges inside the node we can specify which columns we want to get back so let's write this down and let's see how it looks like so we're back with some code that i have written here where i have only taken the first five customers and inside that inside the edges and inside the node i have mentioned which fields that i want so it is only id and email at this point um, if you refer to the database table that i had there are multiple columns here um, except marketing created ad updated ad first name last name order accounts etc so we'll be looking at that later but the first thing i want to mention is the page info parameter that we have passed here this is what we are going to use if we want to paginate over the results so if you take a look at the shopify uh, official document they also mention it that if you pass the page info it will get the has next page and end cursor and two additional parameters that i have mentioned here um so this will get you back a result like this where it will say num products this and cursor this is the cursor so this can be used in the after parameter of the next query so you can get the next set of pages so for my store what i have done is i have created eight customers so on our customers page you can see customers 1 to 8 and i target to sync all of these um, into my database so that is why i have kept only first five if you are using the application the maximum you can do is 250 okay so let's begin so first thing i wanted to show was uh, the output that we get back the format of it a little so let's see it this is right here so status code is zoom in a little yeah so the status code is 200 and the body has data in it and that data is a array and inside that we have customers and in the customers array we have edges and page info 
So edges is the index where the actual data can be found, where each of these is an array on itself uh, with the index node, and that will contain the fields that we requested. For in this case, ID and email. So this is uh, the edges where we find the data, and this is the page info. So it says has next page as true, end cursor this, has to use phase equal to false, and start cursor is this. This is where we started. So this is the response pattern uh, that we have to work with, and this is the extensions. I've also uh, included that. That pretty much tells you how much uh, is the maximum capacity of the GraphQL endpoint, and how much is currently available, and what is the restore rate. The restore rate means uh, the seven points that it consumed, the difference between 1000 and 993, it will replenish the quota by 50 points each second. So that is what the restore rate index is. And the other one is the headers, uh, which will return back all the response headers that we get from this API call. So I have mentioned it in request trait. Uh, there is one other line I have mentioned. So you can enable it whenever you want. It will get you back the headers. So now let's write the logic for uh, looping, over, looping over the data and storing it in our database. So let's continue there. So now we have gotten to a point where we can run a do while loop. So what we are doing here is initializing the variable cursor equal to null and then uh, getting the query and getting the response. And after that, we are just checking if the status code is 200 or not. If it is 200, then save this response in DB uh, in the database. And for the cursor variable, get the cursor from this uh, index. So from response, body, data, customers, page info. So what it does, so what this function does, is simply receives a page info object and it just checks if, if it has the next page index, which is equal to true or not. If it is, then page info end cursor, otherwise null. And if it gets thrown any error, then it will return null, of course. So this is how we can run the do while loop over and over until we receive the cursor as null, in which case we will know that, okay, we have um, looped over all the customers. So that is why I did uh, first five, I didn't do 10, because then otherwise in one shot, I would have gotten all eight customers and I wouldn't be able to show the looping over of the customers. In the query object, I introduced this filter object, which just takes first five, and then just checks if cursor is not equal to null, then it appends it uh, with the after string like this. Otherwise, it will not append anything and it will be like that. So that is why when, when the query is uh, called here, in the third parameter, I'm sending the cursor object. In first time, it will be passed null, and then it will get the cursor uh, from this line, and then it will pass those cursor values. So this is how it will go. And let me show you the response. The status code is 200. The body, uh, this edges, yeah. So body data customers, page info. So page info has this, has next page and cursor and this. So it is true, so it will, we can loop over one more time. So let me collapse this. In edges, th these are the fields that I got back uh, from the GraphQL that I mentioned here. So ID, email, created or updated at first and last name, number of orders, phone, and then the default address. In the default address is also an object where I had to send the specific fields that I was looking for. Um, if you take a look at the database, then I had to leave out uh, certain fields. Um, one of them being the currency. One of being... Uh, So if you take a look at the customers table that I already have, then the accept marketing and the currency field uh, got left out here because if we learn more into GraphQL, we will find out that there are more uh, nested objects uh, present in those. So I think we can update that later by using the REST API. There is no big deal with that. Okay. So this is what we are going to work with. And this is the function that will save this response in the DB. So let me create a payload here. So store ID. Okay, first thing I want to do is uh, loop over the response. So I sent over the edges uh, index here. 
So this is the index that I will get in this function. So let me loop over it. Let me check one more time. So each of the edges is an array on itself containing just one node. Yeah. So I'll do for each response as edges node equals edge zero node. So let's see what we got here. I think I ran into some kind of error. So this okay. So let's see what we are getting here in the response variable. I'll do this. We are in an array, and each of those has the node in it. Okay, so zero index is not needed. So let me remove this zero index from here. Let's see now what we get. So each of the array elements um, contains a node index. So let me read that. I remove the zero index from here. Now let's see what we get. Yeah, so this is the one that we got. Okay. So from the node, we have to extract the ID of this uh, customer, which is GID Shopify customer, this string right here. So what we will do, simply string replace this thing right here. So we can do, ID equals str replace node ID. So that will serve as the customer ID. So let me check the. So that will be the ID. Then the store ID will become store arrow table ID. Then the email yeah. created at updated at. Updated at. So let me fill out this thing and I'll get back back. And I have written the database operation for this. So I have uh, for the ID variable, I have replaced this and uh, made this int. So it will be an integer. So let's see the update payload. Sorry, the payload that we are going to save in the TV. So yeah, store ID one. Email this created at yeah default address is JSON encoded. Yeah, fine. So now if I run it, let me check customer table. I guess I shouldn't have returned here. Okay, so for each, yeah, I should have returned it here. In the first loop itself, it got returned. So if I click sync, yeah, sync successful, and yeah, so we have got five. Okay, so why didn't we get? And now we got. Okay, so that was a minor mistake. I had to do the after inside double quotes. Okay, no problem. So if I run it again and check, yeah, now I got all customers. Okay, so that was a minor mistake. Uh, inside the after parameter, you need to append it with double quotes uh, like this, only then it will work. Okay, so let me now show the data on the front end. That should be pretty quick. And there we have it on our app.
So if I refresh here, then these are the customers on my store that I have synced to my database. The code is quite simple. If you go into Shopify controller, then you will get here. So the store is users Shopify store. And then from that store, get the customers, select these columns and call the get method. And in the index.blade of uh, customers, we just loop over it and show the details. And in the last, we just show the state function. So yeah, this was an example of uh, GraphQL APIs, how to fetch data. So if I keep building on this product, I'll also demonstrate how to make an API request to create a customer or create an order through the GraphQL API. This is it for this uh, video. I highly recommend uh, you go through the Shopify GraphQL API reference and uh, experiment with the API, you might run into problems, try to solve it. If not, if nothing works, then drop a comment in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you out and subscribe while you are at it. So it helps me be motivated to create these kind of videos. Yeah. That's about it. See you.